For our final challenge this week, we've been asked to use the COVID-19 data file used in our first filtering demo to find the total number of outbreaks in workplace settings by day, find the total number of outbreaks in workplace and education settings by day and setting, and finally, find the average and total number of outbreaks by setting. So this is a bit different from filtering. Now we're getting into the realm of summarizing or aggregating data. So anytime that you're asked to find, say, the number of cases by setting, we're going to aggregate our data based on one or more columns. So we've already been exposed to the idea of aggregation because we've used the describe function. So this has provided us with values like the minimum, maximum, averages, uh, percentiles for our numeric columns. So we can use aggregation functions in Pandas to transform our data frames by producing summary data frames. And when we talk about aggregating data, we need to think about which data can we aggregate. And this gets into the idea of something called additive versus non-additive measures or additive versus non-additive values. So when you're aggregating, it's important to figure out if what you're aggregating can be added across the columns that you've chosen. So in our example, the case count is the number of cases for a particular day. So if we tried to add up the number of cases per day to get the number of total cases, this is an additive measure. We would not have any double counting. Let's look at an alternate file. So table four outbreak summary. This is adapted from our outbreaks data. This includes a running total column. Now, anytime you have a running total, the, that measure is not additive. So this is created by adding the previous day's total number of cases to today's cases. So that column cannot be summarized over time. So anytime you have a column that cannot be summarized over time, that's a clue that you have a non-additive measure. Let's take a look at that file. All right, let's take a look at data at the table for uh, outbreaks summary. So we have a running total column. which is the total number of cases over time. So let's get the total number of outbreaks in workplaces summarized by date. So when we're summarizing our data, we first need to filter our data down to the desired range. Then we need to group our data by the columns that we want to summarize by. And then finally, we want to say, how do we want to aggregate our remaining columns? When you're doing aggregation, you do not need to aggregate all of your columns, just the columns that you want as part of your aggregation. Now, what are different aggregation methods? The most common aggregation functions include sum, where we add up all the values in the group, count, the number of rows in that group, and unique, the number of unique values in that group, and very common to use n unique to count the number of unique identifiers. We can use min and max, which gets the minimum or maximum value for that group. First and last, which returns the first value or the last value seen in that group. And mean, or the average of the values in that group. So what does an aggregation look like? Well, first, we'll filter our data to just workplace outbreaks. Then we use the group by function and we specify the columns that we want to group on, in this case, date, and then we want to aggregate our number of cases by the total sum of cases in that group. So let's try that now. So we'll read in our data and we're going to rename our columns as well. First, I'll read the data. We'll take a look at our variable explorer. 
and we'll see that we have a uh, date, public health unit name. So we'll rename these columns to date, PHU, uh, PHU ID. Then what else do we have? Outbreak group. So we'll just call that group and count. Great. So our data frame now has easy to use columns. First, we'll write our filter condition. And I'll create a variable called filters and say, this is where uh, the group, the outbreak group is equal to for workplace. And then I'll create my uh, filter data. Data frame is going to be data filters. Now I can do my aggregation. So total cases per day is equal to day, uh, filter data dot group by, then I open and close brackets, open some square brackets, I'm creating a list, and I'm gonna group by date, and then I'm going to aggregate, and then I'm going to open up curly brackets here and say, I want to aggregate my count by the sum function. And now I have 400, a new data frame called total cases per day, 446 rows. So for example, 2020, 11, 01, I have 136 outbreaks, 134 the next day, 137 the next day. We could change this to be average as well by saying, uh, by changing this to be mean. So we see on 1101, we have an average of six outbreaks per day, six outbreaks, six outbreaks, six outbreaks. And this is across all health units per day. Now we're not limited to using number columns in our aggregations. We can also use strings. So for example, we can ask how many health units were reporting outbreaks in workplace settings each day. So we can run an aggregation on our health unit name column as well, correct? So in this case, we could use count. We might even use n unique to say, give me the unique uh, names of uh, public health units. So check this out. We can also do this. So I'm going to do count of, I'm going to summarize the count of outbreaks by sum, and then my public health unit by n unique. So the number of unique public health unit names that appear in my total cases per day, I have 22 health units being reported on 1101. I have 24 health units being reported on 1107 with 157 total outbreaks that day. And we can export this total cases per day data frame to a CSV. So now we've created a CSV file, or at least we've created a data frame that gives us the total number of outbreaks in workplace settings by day. Now let's move to our next challenge. We want to produce a data frame with the total outbreaks in workplaces and education settings by day and by setting. So what kind of filter could you write for this? Take a moment and write a filter condition where we filter our data down to the group being either workplace or education. So you may have come up with the following filter. Filter two data.group is in the list three education or four workplace. And then finally, how can we get the total number of outbreaks summarized by date and setting? Well, we just need to modify the group by statement that we use. So we can say total cases per day and setting is equal to edu work data dot group by. Now, first we want to group by date and then we want to group by the setting or the group. 
And then we can do our aggregation where the number of cases, our count of cases, we sum the number of cases. And then we need to wrap the uh, columns that we're aggregating in curly brackets. So if we look at total cases per day in setting, we have 892 rows this time. And now we have for 2020-1101 for the education group, we have 84 cases. Notice how we have a row for each pair of date and group. And just like before, we could also include, say, the count of public health units involved in the outbreaks by uh, aggregating on the PHU column. So we could say PHU is n unique. So give me the number of unique public health units. If we take a look at this, we see in education, 15 public health units, but in workplace, 22 public health units. So we've now created a CSV file with total number of outbreaks in workplaces and education settings. Finally, our final challenge is to create a CSV file with the average and total number of outbreaks by setting. So how could we do this? In this case, we wanna do multiple aggregations on one column. So we want the total number of cases by outbreak group and we want the average number of cases by that outbreak group. So you may be tempted to write the following code. So we first group by our outbreak group, then we aggregate our cases by the sum, and then aggregate the cases again by the mean. So does this work? Well, let's try it. So let's create uh, cases by group data frame, and this will be equal to data dot group by, and we're going to group by the group. I need to put the column names in the square brackets. And then I'll aggregate my data frame by saying uh, my count, I'm gonna aggregate that by sum, and then I'm going to aggregate count again by mean. Let's take a look here, cases by group, and it looks like I don't have a sum. I just have a mean or an average number of outbreaks. What's happened here? So if we put a column in our aggregation multiple times, the last aggregation we write will be used to aggregate the column. So this technique isn't going to work, or is it? Remember from week four that we can create a calculated column from existing columns? Well, it turns out that we can make a copy of a column. So we're going to take advantage of this by making a copy of the cases column and we'll call it average cases. And then we'll apply the mean summary to this brand new column. So take a look at the strategy. So I'll create a new column called data. Uh, let's call it count copy. This is equal to data count. And then I'm going to summarize count copy by mean. And if I look at the original data frame, I have a new column called count copy, has the exact same value as the count column. But then if I look at cases by group, I have my total number of cases and I have my average number of cases. And using cases by group .columns, I could rename these columns as well and export my data frame to a CSV file. And that is how we aggregate data by multiple columns.